Welcome back to Bitsby Trip, and this is your host, Carter. Let's get into this. On today's episode, we revisit the large mining rig the team and I put together on a live stream a few weeks back, but take it from its resting position of not 21 tightly packed GPUs, but from an operational 14 card 5700 XT build that is now tucked away at the farm, hashing away on Ethereum. Building a 14X mining rig, currently Linux's maximum for the B250 mining expert motherboard, and getting it stable sometimes can be a challenge. Making sure a good distribution of power, airflow to the cards to help dissipate the heat are key factors when making something this large and stable. What I want to cover in this episode are some of the considerations if you're going to build a mining rig like this. What are its advantages and what are some of the challenges you may run into and ultimately why consider a single motherboard like this? The first and obvious reason comes down to the singular cost of a CPU, the motherboard itself, and memory. In this build we went with a pretty standard B250 mining expert motherboard, a super cheap Celeron G3930 CPU and 16 gigs of DDR memory. You could technically get away with less memory. However, during some of our Windows testing, the machine ran far better and more stable with 16 gigs of RAM versus the four and eight respectively. So we left the 16 gig in there. Memory these days are pretty cheap too. So you also got that going for you. Additionally, the ability to start with a few GPUs and scale up to 14 in a single rig keeps the whole operation footprint much cleaner. Major consideration though comes down to how you're going to power such a beast. A single 15 amp, even a 20 amp will not be enough. The machine would need to be split across two 20 amp circuits at a minimum or a single 30 amp connection, which could technically handle two of these beasts. Speaking of power, we went with three times the EVGA 1200 P2 power supplies. Now to get three to work appropriately on these GPUs, we had to use a few extra dual eight pin EVGA connectors borrowed from a different PSU that we had some extra cables from. This was due to the particular GPUs requiring both an eight pin and six pin PCIe rel and the 1200 PSUs only shipping with four of these dual type of connectors for the PCIe. The primary A PSU allowed the first 1200P2 to power the board plus the CPU 8 pin connector. Additionally supplying four of the GPUs using four of the PCIe 12 volt rels. This PSU also used single SATA connectors per GPU supplying through the SATA connector to the six pin connector on the GPU riser. It is very important to ensure the riser is powered off the same PSU providing the 12 volt rel. In our experience, it shows that if you mix these between risers and 12 volt rels across multiple PSUs, bad things can occur, including random reboots and non-stable rigs. The remaining two PSUs were plugged into the B and C connectors on the B250 respectively, and each powered five GPUs borrowing two additional 12 volt rel cables from another EVGA PSU we had extra cables on. Each of these GPUs also powered by a single SATA connector with both PSUs using one of the PATA slots for B and C to provide the five volt to six pin riser power. It is important to note that the prior testing the 5700 XT, that if you just plug it in and let it go without adjusting any configuration, your riser draw will be as much as 70 watts from the five volt lead, which could spell disaster for your cable and PSU. It is important to adjust your core megahertz and voltages down, which would reduce your power draw from our observation under 50 watts, staying well within the SATA and PAT specification. This build will explore a few different settings, but the most stable that we've seen so far has been around 1400 core at 750 millivolts to the core and a memory set within Hive to 920, which is effectively 1840 megahertz on the memory. We also used a basic BIOS mod, which we've included in the description below, accomplishing anywhere from 56 to 57.77 mega hash at 140 watts per GPU for a grand total of around 2200 watts for 794.8 mega hash for the full system. For the past few weeks, we've seen stability in these settings, keeping the machine up around 98% of the time with 2% being due to minor restarts and reboots about once every 24 hours. This causes about a two to four minute outage per hour, which we are still trying to work on and figure out. This still shows it to be a pretty strong runner. Well, hopefully this gives you some quick insight into the 14X mining rig. And while it's an evolving build, we'll probably look at it a few more times. We wanted to get this out to you guys as quick as possible. Now, if you want some more BBT content, you must check out the podcast I was just on with Bitcoin Broski on hash rate. If you've ever wondered where I started mining, some discussions about ETH 2.0 and general ecosystem around mining, you'll want to load this up on your phone and spend an hour with me. I'd love to hear your feedback on this and if you guys think I should do some more of these. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.